Gilligan's Island was an iconic 60s TV series that has persevered in reruns despite having only lasted three seasons. In the years since the show's initial debut, the beloved stars of the show have become inseparable from the characters they played in the eyes of fans. But some of the show's main cast members almost didn't make it on the program. Join Facts First as we explore actors that almost starred in Gilligan's Island. Gilligan's Island has remained one of the most memorable shows from the 60s, despite the fact it only lasted for three seasons. The show has stayed in the minds of audiences for a variety of reasons, from its novel premise of a bunch of castaways stuck on an island to its talented ensemble cast. In addition to Bob Denver as the titular Gilligan, the show also featured stars Russell Johnson, Alan Hale Jr., Jim Backus, Natalie Schaefer, Don Wells, and Tina Louise as Gilligan's fellow castaways on the island. While it's hard to imagine anyone besides these stars playing their respective characters, there were many other stars considered for the major roles. If any of these following actors had been featured on the series, it's hard to say how much differently the show would have been received. Let's take a look at the actors who almost featured on Gilligan's Island. Dabney Coleman Russell Johnson played the role of the professor, but there were other actors in talks to take on the role before he was cast. One such actor was Dabney Coleman, who had screen-tested for the part. Dabney was nowhere near the celebrity he went on to become when he screen-tested for the professor, and that's perhaps why he didn't end up getting the part. Dabney went on to achieve immense fame despite his loss of this particular role, appearing in successful series like Kojak and The Mary Tyler Moore Show. He also ventured into film work and has remained a reliable character actor in the days since. Some of his most popular films include Tootsie and 9 to 5. Both film appearances proved successful for the character actor, who still acts today at age 89. Jane Mansfield it's no secret the character of Ginger was meant to parody famous movie stars from around the time. But did you know one such movie star was actually in talks to play the role? If Jane Mansfield had been given the role of Ginger, it certainly would have added some authenticity to the idea that the character of Ginger was a legitimate Hollywood diva. After Jane turned down the role, actress Tina Louise made the character her own. Apparently, Jane turned it down because she didn't want to get stuck being a diva in the eyes of the public. Jane's decision was wise, as actress Tina Louise ended up getting typecast because of the role after the series came to an end, and she had a hard time finding work. Tina was infamously the only one of the main Gilligan's Island cast members who never returned for a reunion, and this was partly because she resented her character. Jerry Van Dyke the Dick Van Dyke Show was already a major success by the time Gilligan's Island came on the air, and Dick Van Dyke's younger brother wanted his own hit TV series. His younger brother was Jerry Van Dyke, who has since been survived by his older sibling. Back in the day, Jerry was offered the part of Gilligan. Since he was looking for television work, he considered it, but he ended up turning down the part due to his aversion to becoming part of an ensemble cast. He wanted to be a star like his older brother, but this never ended up happening for the younger sibling. His biggest role over the course of his career ended up being being in the 1989 TV series Coach. Although Bob Denver ended up getting the role of Gilligan, the producers were initially hesitant to hire him onto the show. Prior to his appearance on Gilligan's Island, Bob had become popular for his portrayal of a character named Maynard G. Krebs on the series The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis. The character of Maynard was a beatnik, and the producers didn't want a beatnik to play the character of Gilligan. Instead, they wanted someone with an innocent charm. Bob insisted he could play innocent, and the producers gave him a chance. They were blown away by his take on the character, and he ended up getting the role. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. And stick around for more actors who almost were in Gilligan's Island. Raquel Welch before Don Wells ended up getting the part of the charming and innocent Marianne, actress Raquel Welch had auditioned. Raquel wasn't famous at the time, but her breakout turn in one million years BC was just around the corner. If she had gotten the part of Mary Ann, it arguably would have conflicted with the actress's burgeoning film career. The character of Mary Ann hadn't been a part of Gilligan's Island's pilot, but it was written in after the fact. Given that Raquel Welch soon became a sex symbol after losing out on the part of Mary Ann, it's debatable that she would have brought the same innocent charm to the character that Don Wells did. As with Tina Louise, Don ended up being typecast after the show. Because of this, Raquel Welch probably has no regrets about losing the part. Raquel is still alive today at age 81, while Don sadly passed away in 2020. After her passing, Tina Louise became the last surviving main cast member of the show. Carol O'Connor 
Carol O'Connor was a TV actor most people will instantly recognize for his time as Archie Bunker on the hit show All in the Family. Before Carol got his breakout turn on that series, he was a fledgling star putting in his dues. During Carol's earlier days, he had tried to get the role of the skipper on Gilligan's Island. After Carol auditioned for the part, he ended up being rejected by Sherwood Schwartz, the show's creator. Alan Hale Jr. was cast instead, and most fans of the series can probably agree Sherwood made the right choice. Although Carol was certainly a talented, comedic actor, it's hard to imagine him as the affable and optimistic skipper. Kit Smythe Before Gilligan's Island was picked up by the network, it was just a pilot. The pilot was a little different than the show that would eventually follow it. Not only were some of the actors and actresses different, but some of the characters were different as well. The character of Mary Ann wasn't even present, and the character of Ginger was a completely different one than she'd end up being. The only two things about the character of Ginger that remained the same across the pilot and subsequent series were the fact that she was an attractive woman with red hair, and that she was named Ginger. In the pilot, actress Kit Smythe played Ginger. Instead of being a movie star, the pilot depicted her as a secretary. Nancy McCarthy Although the character of Marianne was missing from the pilot, there was another female character in her place. That character was Bunny, who was another secretary. Gilligan's Island went from having two secretary castaways to none. Actress Nancy McCarthy played Bunny. Despite the fact Nancy got to appear in the pilot of one of the most successful TV shows of the 60s, it appears she didn't end up getting to do much else in her career after the character of Bunny was replaced by Marianne. John Gabriel the character of the professor was also played by a different actor in the pilot. In the pilot, an actor named John Gabriel played the part. His portrayal of the character wasn't received very well when it was tested with audiences, so Russell Johnson was eventually brought on to spice up the role for the series. Nowadays, John Gabriel is most fondly remembered for his time on the 1975 soap opera series Ryan's Hope. Now it's time to hear from you. Are you curious how other stars would have fared on Gilligan's Island? Or are you content with the show's main iconic cast? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.